Faster than light travel is possible, a trailblazing scientist would say. And here's the proof. If you take a relatively powerful laser and shine it on the moon, you'll see something quite remarkable. Even the slightest flick of your wrist will make that spot on the moon travel great distances, maybe even faster than light itself. Could it be proof that this type of travel could be a part of our reality? A conservative scientist who's all about sticking to the rules of physics might argue this trick doesn't prove a thing. After all, that spot isn't a physical object, so there's nothing stopping it from moving faster than light. But when it comes to humans, well, that's a whole different story. But a passionate, trailblazing scientist won't admit defeat so easily, because in recent years, we've gathered some pretty convincing evidence that traveling at the speed of light is not just an idle dream, but something within our grasp. So who's got it right? In this video, you'll find out what physical phenomena could actually allow us to break the light barrier. What kind of fuel do we need for a Star Trek-inspired warp drive? Why a voyage in a Star Trek vessel could turn you into a nuclear bomb in reality? And why is faster-than-light travel not really time travel and doesn't create paradoxes? In other words, what science loopholes will help us outrun light? Albert Einstein's theory of relativity states that the speed of light is a limit that nothing can surpass. But if you still want to give it a shot, let's recall Einstein's formula, E equals mc squared. Thanks to this formula, we know that the faster you accelerate, the greater your mass becomes, and the more energy you'll need for further acceleration. As you approach the speed of light, your mass will increase infinitely. Therefore, you'll need an infinite amount of energy to keep moving. So, based on this, the only way to travel at the speed of light is to have a mass that equals zero. However, this will rather kill humanity than help it achieve the speed of light. But we can reach 6 million subscribers without losing mass. Your subscription will be enough. But hold on. The trailblazing scientists suggest taking a look at Galaxy GN Z11. We know it took the light from the galaxy 10 billion years to reach Earth. That means it's situated 10 billion light years away from us. However, with Galaxy GN Z11, things aren't quite as they seem. The light needed 13.4 billion years to reach Earth, and yet, the actual distance separating this galaxy is 32 billion light years away from us. How's that even possible? So, did Galaxy GN Z11 outpace light and manage to move 18 billion light years further? The mass of the entire galaxy surely can't be zero, but the conservative scientist is quick to object. It's not the galaxy that's outpaced light, but rather the expansion of space itself between us. Since the universe has been expanding with acceleration for the past several billion years, galaxy GNZ11 has drifted much farther away from us during that time. In other words, mass still remains a major problem. Though, in reality, we're not composed as much of mass as we are of energy. If we look at an atom, nearly all its mass is concentrated in the nucleus, which consists of neutrons and protons. They in turn are made up of quarks, which have mass. However, if you add up the mass of the quarks in one atom, it'll be much less than the mass of the entire atom. So, where does the rest come from? In fact, it's the energy of the strong nuclear interaction that holds the quarks together, despite their constant chaotic oscillations. Imagine carrying a bag with a fish in it after a successful fishing trip. If the fish wriggles a lot, it'll be harder to carry than if it's still. Therefore, any material object is mostly energy rather than pure mass. And that energy, in turn, didn't exist at all at some point. Picture a space where all particles have no mass and move at the speed of light. 
that's how the newborn universe was. But as the temperature gradually dropped, particles began to cool and condense. It's like when you drive in a cold car during winter. The vapor from your breath cools down and condenses on the glass as water. Except in the universe, it happened on a much grander scale. This phenomenon is called the Higgs condensate. I can already hear the trailblazing scientists suggesting to decondense this field to get rid of Einsteinian speed limits. Do you think we should consider it? Well, unfortunately, it's not that simple. Under such conditions, you just turn into vapor. Or more precisely, you just vanish. Because without pure mass, strong nuclear interaction wouldn't be able to hold your quarks together. Even for such a goal, the sacrifice is too big. So let's better find some slightly safer options. Though Albert Einstein banned anything from speeding faster than light, he did leave us one escape clause. Wormholes, or spatial tunnels directly connecting distant corners of the universe. But we're not Einstein, so we can't forbid you to subscribe to our channel, especially given that we're going towards a common goal of 6 million subscribers. In theory, with their help, you could move from one part of space to another almost instantly. With unlimited faster-than-light speed, according to recent research, wormholes are entirely possible if, besides the three spatial dimensions and one time dimension, there's a fifth dimension with a high concentration of quantum fluctuations. Then, in the future, once our civilization becomes advanced enough, we could use wormholes just like we use the subway today. But here's the thing. Nobody has ever seen this fifth dimension, and even if it does exist, it's totally unclear whether humanity will ever be able to control negative energy. Without it, traveling through a wormhole would feel like going through a meat grinder. That's because all the particles that enter a wormhole accelerate to the speed of light, and nothing stops them from crashing into you mid-flight. But the main downside of wormholes is that because of them, you can only travel at the speed of light relative to yourself. However, outside the wormhole, time will flow as usual. Meaning that, while just one second may pass for you inside, thousands of years could pass in the outside world. So, there might be nobody to admire your faster-than-light journey when you return. Fortunately, the trailblazing scientist suggests a more realistic way to travel at the speed of light that they're testing now, and that's quantum teleportation. Imagine having a pair of dice that always adds up to eight. So when one die rolls a five, you can bet your bottom dollar the other one's gonna show a three. A similar thing happens with elementary particles entangled with each other. Even if separated by enormous distances, these particles maintain their properties, and based on the state of one particle, you can precisely predict the state of the other. Subscribe to receive awesome content at the speed of light. In physics, this phenomenon is called quantum entanglement. Thanks to this, it's possible to transmit information faster than the speed of light across vast spaces. Professor Anton Zeilinger from the University of Vienna conducted thousands of such experiments on the Canary Islands. However, quantum teleportation doesn't work like the teleportation devices from sci-fi movies because it doesn't transmit the object itself, but rather information about it. So, thanks to entangled particles, we can obtain data about an object in one place and reproduce the exact same object in another, with the first object disappearing. It's entirely possible that in the future, with the help of quantum teleportation, we'll be able to transport people too. After all, we are just made up of particles. Imagine this, you step into a booth on Earth. There, a computer analyzes the quantum state of all of your particles, comparing them with the entangled ones, and sends this information to a similar booth on the planet Proxima Centauri b. Then, a quantum computer on that distant planet begins to reproduce your exact copy from the entangled particles. 
But the conservative scientist will, of course, point out one tiny detail. A human is made up of seven octillion atoms. That's even more than the stars in the sky we can see. And all of them need not only be scanned, but also assembled in the right order in a new location. Actually, the heat death of the universe will come sooner than computers manage to assemble you atom by atom. Still, the trailblazing scientist is sure that future technologies will eventually solve all the problems. And in thousands of years, quantum teleportation will become a routine practice for our descendants. And not just that. Does that sound too far-fetched? Not for the Star Trek-inspired physicist Miguel Alcubierre, who back in 1994 proved the opposite by crunching the numbers to create a real warp drive just like on the Starship Enterprise. According to Alcubierre's vision, this device would consist of a central zone with a stable space where the passengers would be. Behind them, space would expand, pushing the central part forward, while ahead space would contract and pull it, kind of like a wave carrying a surfer. This way, people in the central stable zone would accelerate to the speed of light and even surpass it. And most importantly, a device like this doesn't go against the general theory of relativity, so it's very likely to become a reality in the future. But here comes the conservative scientist, skeptical of the whole warp drive idea and eager to bring us back to Earth right from the start. Scientists calculated that the energy needed to launch a warp drive must exceed the energy of the observable universe tenfold. However, just three years later, new calculations showed that only the energy of three suns would be enough for the warp drive, which suddenly sounds more feasible. Although, the conservative scientist believes that this kind of public transport poses a threat to the entire galaxy. Since the warp drive moves faster than light, Elementary particles that pop up on its way will simply get stuck ahead, and during a sudden stop, they'll release energies sufficient to destroy several planets. So the side effect of traveling in a warp drive is turning yourself into a super nuclear bomb. Yet, the trailblazing scientist will argue that, according to calculations, the explosion can be avoided simply by reducing the speed to the point of getting slower than light. Sooner or later, we will create a device for moving around at the speed of light. But then, we'll have to face a much more global problem than the technical difficulties in building a spaceship. Because most scientists tend to believe that these much-desired trips could completely destroy the fabric of our universe. Picture this. Your close friend jets off on a deep space voyage aboard a pre-light-speed spaceship, cruising at 95% of the speed of light. Meanwhile, you stay on Earth. Now, let's map you on a space-time diagram. The horizontal line represents space, and the vertical line represents time. The yellow line, angled at 45 degrees, would be the light barrier. Your friend on the pre-light speed ship cannot cross it. Then, feeling sentimental at the farewell, you realize you're actually head over heels for your friend. So, you decide not to waste any time and send her a faster-than-light capsule with a rose and a heartfelt confession. From your perspective, the capsule will cross the light barrier horizontally. When your friend receives your confession, she's completely taken aback as she doesn't share your feelings. She decides to return your faster-than-light capsule with the rose, adding a proposal to just stay friends. Of course, you're heartbroken. But at the very same moment, the universe literally rips apart because your friend's rejection reached Earth even before you sent your message. But why did the capsule cross the light barrier not horizontally, but at an angle? It's all because of the near light speed at which your friend's ship is moving that warps the space around her. So from her perspective, the horizontal line on the diagram points straight into Earth's past. That's why you'll receive the reply even before you work up the nerve to send your confession. 
And here comes the causality paradox that, according to scientists' assumptions, could wipe out space-time itself. But the trailblazing scientist isn't buying into its fatalism. Because why should we care about what's happening from our friend's perspective if, back on Earth, time keeps on ticking as usual? Similarly, from our perspective, Galaxy GNZ 11 moves faster than light, but somehow the universe doesn't collapse. All because for this galaxy, time moves forward, so no paradoxes arise. Plus, when you get the rejection capsule, you'll find that the rose won't be exactly fresh, meaning that time inside the capsule moved forward, not backward. Otherwise, you'd receive a tiny rose sprout or even just the seed. Moreover, a group of real trailblazing scientists, Hainal Andreka, Judith Madaraz, Istvan Nemeti, and others, conducted calculations on the familiar space-time scale, except they used the general theory of relativity. According to their scientific work, journeys at the speed of light and won't equate to time travel, thus avoiding causality paradoxes. And mathematically, it all adds up. But even the modern general theory of relativity still can't provide exact answers, as even Albert Einstein himself couldn't reconcile it with quantum theory. Besides, the theory of quantum gravity remains a mystery to us. The conservative scientist believes that, in the future, it might completely exclude the possibility of moving at the speed of light. Meanwhile, their open-minded colleagues think it will be just the opposite. And the discovery of the theory of quantum gravity will only confirm the reality of faster-than-light travel and lead to the emergence of new revolutionary devices that will propel us faster than light. Interestingly, there is evidence that such technologies already exist, just not here. The Pentagon has been releasing videos of suspicious, unidentified flying objects for years. What is known about them for sure is that they move incredibly fast. The situation escalated when, during congressional hearings in July of 2023, U.S. Air Force officer and former intelligence officer David Grush openly claimed that all these objects are definitely of extraterrestrial origin. And if they are indeed spaceships built by other civilizations, their scientists have undoubtedly mastered faster-than-light travel in one form or another. Because that's the only way to cover thousands of light-years between stars quickly enough. Could all these observations be a signal to us that moving at the speed of light is possible and that we shouldn't give up? So what do you think? Will faster-than-light travel ever be more than just a pipe dream for humankind?